Hello everyone, um, I'm going to say today a few words on Parsha's Pinchas uh, that we just passed um, but I had something uh, you know clear in my mind to share it before so I want to share it today. What happens a lot is that you try to prepare or understand the Parsha and only on Shabbat itself you understand it and you connect to it by reading it, by learning it and only then you have the clarity which makes the most sense um, because on that day the day of the parsha is where you can get the most out of it the gift of shabbat is that you can understand things on a deeper level so i wanted to um, speak about something pretty interesting in this parsha there's something that seems completely controversial when you read it or in the way you read it um, and especially with Rashi Rashi says something crazy Rashi says on the verse that says that uh, when he speaks about the bringing a sacrifice for Rosh Chodesh the new moon the new month um, that it's gonna be a chatas Lechatas uh, Lashem, chapter 28, verse 15, that we're going to bring a sin offering for Hashem. And what do you mean for Hashem? Hashem sinned, he needs a sacrifice. And Rashi says, yes, because Hashem made a big mistake. He doesn't say big mistake, he said he made, a, he made a mistake, or at least it's to atone for him. That's how he phrase it. Because what did he do? Hashem, uh, and that's a very famous story, is the story of the first um, problem in the whole history of the world, of the universe. The first, what was the first problem before even the sin of Adam Arishon, before even the sin of the trees who didn't make their fruit taste like their bark? what was the first actual problem ever recorded in entire history is the story of the sun and the moon on the fourth day Hashem creates the two great luminaries the sun and the moon and they were both kings so to speak both shining bright and the moon made a, a, a statement some would say it's a complaint, some say it's a statement. And the moon says, how can two kings rule at the same time? What's the point? And although, according to many, it was a very good question, um, that question made the moon uh, be diminished. Hashem said, you're right. You make a very valid point. You won't understand. I'm gonna diminish you. Somehow, to get to understand that, she had to be diminished, and the moon became her light of the moon became smaller. And uh, but Hashem, seeing that he did that, felt bad, so to speak, and he brought her a lot of stars. But originally, there was supposed to be sun and moon day and day and night, so to speak, not non-stop. So, what is this about? It's a very strange story, and obviously every story that we hear about from our Holy Torah and our sages are all codes and keywords to try to understand our life throughout history, and our life today, and uh, to, to gain insight and lesson on why we're here and why everything that's happening is the way it is um, so the Sun and the moon represents many 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 things um, actually actually almost all the commentary say that this question about the verse that Hashem has to bring an atonement for Hashem is can only be understood on a Kabbalistic level obviously um, the root of every verse is need to be understood on the Kabbalah, but this one specifically you have to know unless you understand the Kabbalah of it you'll not understand anything of it so 
I'm not a Kabbalist, but we will try to understand on our, with our sim on simple level, what it means. Um, so the sun and the moon represent many different things. One of the things it represents is uh, God and the world, or God and the Jewish people. It represents also Esav and Yaakov, Israel and the nations. It represents also well, the nations, well, it's around the nation, depends who is the moon, who is the sun. Technically, Israel is the sun, the nation is the moon. Um, Hashem is the sun, Israel is the moon, and the earth is the nations. Everything is about the light being sent, direct light. The moon reflects the light to bring light on earth. Um, another thing is that it represents a leader and its students, a rabbi and his students. And we have actually in this parasha a very interesting coincidence where it speaks about Moshe Rabbeinu passing on his light, his level of prophecy, his aura to Yehoshua and what does Rashi say? Moshe is like the, moon, the sun and Yehoshua like the moon. Coincidence? I don't think so. So a teacher and its students and um, a man and a woman, a husband and wife and we're gonna see that this is really the root of everything. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so all different de levels on which we can understand what the sun and moon represents, and they're all true and all reflect a specific facet of the truth. So, wh what are we here to learn? So, with your with Yehoshua, first of all, I want to give the example. What was those two two moons, two crowns? How can I have two kings? Was the moon asking? In a way, Adam was with Eve at the beginning and says, what I need a, a man and a woman. We see that at the beginning, Adam was not interested in the, in, in, in the wife. He let her go alone in the garden right away after he created her, Hashem created her. So why, 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 uh, why having a wife? Why do I need? Hashem says, is a connect It's not good to be alone. But more than that, if you go in a today, in our world today, why do you need two boss in the house? Right? You need one boss, or the husband, or the wife. Why do you have two boss? It creates problems. How can you have two boss working at once? So, the answer, well, we're going to try to answer that too. Um, as we try to understand what's going on. The idea is the complaint of the moon was a valid complaint. And the complaint was what why do you need two two crowns, two powers? And what the the moon was missing is what the Midrash Rabbah says that she went outside her tchum, she went outside her boundary, meaning she misunderstood or she didn't relate to. Obviously, if you're exactly the same and you exactly have the same identity, the same power, then yes, why do you have two crowns? But the moon didn't understand its own self, so to speak. You can have twins, and each one of the twins has its own uniqueness, but they look exactly the same. Two great luminaries. But one twin has its own uniqueness, and the other one has its own uniqueness. Interestingly, the Zohar says that Hashem, actually, is it the Zohar or Yeshayahu, that Hashem and the Jewish people are like twins. I forgot where I saw it, but I just saw it before. Hashem and, and Hashem and the Jewish people are twins. So, 
I'm just verifying uh, where the source is. Oh yeah, so it was uh, actually on Yeshayahu. Um, where does it say that? In Shemot Rabbah, second chapter, verse 5. So they are twins. So they are, look identical. But are they really identical? No. Why Hashem, Hashem doesn't do two things exactly the same? There's no point. What is the quality of a leader? Why did Hashem choose Yeshua as a country for Moshe? Moshe thought he was going to be his children. He was just Yeshua was very, very similar to Moshe. He had a great quality that was unique. But he was different than Moshe. What was unique about Joshua? Rashi says, Rashi says that Joshua, just like Moshe, was able to see the uniqueness in every individual. You want to know what a true leader is? What a real rabbi is? Someone who can identify the uniqueness of the individual. It's something that is missing today. A real rabbi today has to be able to see what's unique about you. If he treats you like any other Jew, he can't be a rabbi, but he's not a rabbi. A rabbi is able to, to see the individuality of you and can guide you and give you the halacha according to who, what, what your own uniqueness and guide you based on who you are. Otherwise, you can destroy the individual. We're not all copies. We might all be we're all Jewish, might all have a keeper, all blue, black, and white. But that's the outside, the inside, the soul, which is what Nesivas Chinuch say, Nesivas Shalom on Chinuch, and Chovos Atalmidim, the Esh Kodesh, they all say, a real rabbi, you cannot be a teacher of children, you cannot be a rabbi in a school if you can't identify the uniqueness of every child and how every child is a diamond and it's unique. Otherwise you're going to destroy them. And that's why according to Allah, you cannot have more than 23 kids per class because it's impossible for a person with more than 23 kids. In a way, it's as if to say a rabbi, a rabbi, Hasidic rabbi, cannot have more than 23 Hasidim. We know that most groups of Kabbalah and all that, Mikubalim and all started very small. The Bashem had a few at the beginning at least. And uh, the Ramchal, the Rabbi Shumba Yochai had nine people. So always very small. Quantity doesn't matter because each individual can have 23 and then it spreads out. So as soon as we go in mass production and teaching through the masses, and teaching everybody the same and have a system which is the problem of, to, of today's Judaism one of the main main major problem is that we teach every kid the same now we have start to have different schools who start learning that uh, the right way to do it Montessori style and, um, Alpidarco Rabbi Rieri has a whole program on how to do that anyway the idea is we have to Teach every individual differently. That's that's four thing but for, for for education. But the idea. So what what's the message? What's the message? The message you say is there are two people, and we have to work on our individuality of finding what's my mission here. It's my. It's a mission I feel that it comes in almost every one of my class, but that's one of my mission to remind everybody that they have to find their mission, their own uniqueness. If you can't see the greatness in you, how are you going to see the greatness in others? Now, I want to add something very important. The sun and the moon, we say, is the husband and the wife. Everything that we learn always goes, always goes back to Gan Eden. It obviously, it's the root of everything. One of the problem is Adam and Eve, Adam so, uh, didn't see the greatness of Eve. He didn't see that she was great. Only after he sinned, he saw her greatness. How do I know? Because at the beginning he called her Isha. You're just an extension of me. Like the moon, yeah, you're, you're just getting my light. You have nothing on your own. That was the moon saying to the sun, I'm just a refresher of your light. Hashem saying, 
or the Klal Israel is saying to Hashem, we're, not, we're just a reflection of your light, we want to be our own light. And Hashem said, yeah, you're right. I want you to be able to get your own light. I accept that you are your But in order to get your own light, you need first to lose your light. You have to gain it. So I give you little lights all over, millions of stars, billions of stars. It's like Hashem telling Avram, you see all the stars? That's how numerous your people are. But you have to gain those stars. You have to gather those stars, those sparks. 288 sparks, 288 stars. It's like the second Luchos who got broken. They had the first Luchos full of light of Hashem, written by Hashem, and they got broken and we got the Torah Shebel Pei. And now we have all the little pieces that we have to gather. Make a bet in Israel. We have to gather everything. And that's our job. And by gathering everything, we're able to unite all those lights together and those lights become yours. It is from Hashem, but it becomes yours too. So you because the work you have done it makes you acquire that light as if it's your own. My Rebbe used to say still saying, <laughs> he used to say in the previous classes, he says that um, Actually, according to science, the moon has its own light. There is a light inherent to the moon. We cannot perceive it, see it, but it has a, a glow on its own beside the sun's light. So, in a way, it's saying that we, as Jewish people, we are here to gain our own light. So, what, what, what happened with Adam and Eve? Adam, after the sin, after he got diminished, after his wife got diminished, he saw that really she's a Chava. She's able, she has a special power in her that she gives life, Em Kol Chai. She's the mother of all of the whole world. So at the beginning, so just an extension of me, okay, just like a twin. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't understand. It's much more. She's Ezer Kenegdo. She has a purpose. She's a reflection of you, but she's articulator. My Rebbe says, Chevledaz, Chava comes from Chevledaz. She reveals your inner thought. She's your mirror. So it's a twin, but it has a twin with a purpose that has its own unique thing. And the own unique thing, we reflect Adam. Klal Israel is a reflex Hashem's light to the world. The Jews reflect the Torah. To, we are the wife of the Torah, we reflect the light of the Torah to the world in our own unique way. The Varim, Mishneh Torah, is a repetition of the Torah. We reflect the light of the whole Torah with our own words. That's Dvarim, the words of Moshe, who couldn't speak. We have also to learn to speak our own Torah. Um, it's all connected. That's, that's the beauty of it. So the idea is that that's where we're here. We're here to really bring out our own light. And when you're in your couple, you, the only way to really have a strong couple and real love, a real deep relationship, is you're able to see the uniqueness of the other, the beauty of the other. If you do it in your couple, you'll be able to do it with your kids. With a couple, in a way, it's harder because you see them already, there's, a, there's already a shell. We're not as transparent as our kids. Our kids, we see from very young who they are inherently, their natural good traits and qualities. And we, try to, we discover it with them. With an adult, in a way, it's harder because we all have a, a shell or portray something, we have a self-defense mechanism that doesn't allow us to show the true greatness. Sometimes uh, we have too much ego, which hides the, our true greatness. So this is our real challenge. 
Now we challenge is find your own greatness find and seeing everyone its own greatness and now we are doing the three weeks and there's no coincidence of course that Parsha Spinchas is happening during the three weeks and he's telling us if you want the temple to be rebuilt you have to be able to see your own greatness and the greatness of the other. If you see the greatness in the other, you're not going to speak like Shonara. You're not going to have seen at Chinam. So where does it start? It starts at home. The real work starts with your spouse and with your kids, with your neighbor. Why have one Shochen Tov? Meaning one Chaver Tov. Asli Chavai Kone Chaver. Why do says one? Because if you're able to do it with one, you'll be able to do it with others. We want you to be friends with the whole world. We want you to love the whole world. The highest level says the Baal Shem Tov and, and Rav Kook is to be able to love even the Russia and to love even the non-Jew. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that before we shouldn't love them. It means you have to be able to see their greatness. You want to make the world a better place? See the uniqueness of each nation. See the uniqueness of even the Russia. The Russia, will not, the Zohar says, Chas Vesham, you should pray for Russia. God forbid you should pray for Russia to, to die or you should pray for the evil in him to get to disappear. But we have to we have to love every individual. I just spent today, this morning, that's what inspired me too. I went to a prison, high level prison in New Jersey. And um, and I spoke to, um, I think, what, 10 murderers. Some were direct murderers, some not. And I couldn't believe it, the, who those persons really were. I got a lot of empathy for them. Not for what they did, but who, for who they are. What they did is terrible. But obviously, I was I met the ones who were not happy to have done it. <laughs> um, and therefore, you can see that some, some individuals, even though they do terrible acts, they have greatness in them. And the work of prison have helped them to find their greatness. So. This is our job, to be able to reach a level where we can see the greatness in anyone. One, one of the best books to work on it is Tomer Dvorah. If you read Tomer Dvorah, you learn how to see the greatness in you. So Hashem says, Chatos Lashem. We go back to our original question. What did he say? Hashem, I sin? Yeah, because Hashem wanted... that we should be able to earn our own light. And Hashem said, I take responsibility for making you smaller. This is the process, but I, I am with you. Even though you're going to be diminished, I feel bad about it. Hashem is saying, I'm in a relationship with you. And as Yeshaya who says, chapter 63, he says, How much she loves them, us, how much she wants to. How much he wants. How, how, he shows us how much he feels us. He feels what we feel. Um, so it's like that. Indeed, they are my people, children who will not be false, and he became their savior. In all their troubles, he is troubled. In so an angel before him saved them when he's in trouble. With his love with, and with his compassion, he redeemed them, he lifted them and bore them all the days of the world. So what's happening, what he's saying is that 
that whenever we suffer, Hashem suffers with us. It says that in Tomer Dvora. And Tana de Belia, we say is that he is, he does not merely feel for Israel the way one feels for a friend. Rather, he's equally, equally hurt, so to speak, by our pain. It's a very powerful, um, a very powerful thought. Because what Hashem feels, Hashem doesn't have the heart. What are we talking about here? It doesn't make sense, right? It's God. Obviously, God is God. All those are messages and codes to make us understand that God is real. He's involved in our life. He only wants the good for us. And He's saying, yes, I take responsibility for the suffering you're going to go through and from everything that you go through. It's like a parent saying to his kids, I gotta throw you out of the house or I gotta give you this punishment. But I'm gonna go with you in the street. I can't keep you here, you're destroying. But you know, I'll give you what you need to survive. So I take responsibility, but it's to teach you a lesson so that you become a man one day. I'm not talking about parents who just throw the kids in the street and don't want to see them. God forbid. It should never happen. So many kids die because of that. I'm speaking about the parent who is saying, you got to learn your lesson. And the second time, the time, Beta Mingdash, that's what happened. Hashem, I'm throwing you out of the house. So people say, oh, Hashem, that's it. He abandoned the Jews. Let's do a new religion, Christianity, Islam, the new saviors. The new Jews. No, no, Hashem said, you don't understand. I didn't throw them and abandon them. It's not that I don't want them. I want them to get the message. I want them to go back on their feet. I want them to get, become the nation they're supposed to be and to rebuild the third temple. We did it once with the, with the second temple. We'll, have, we'll do it another time with the third temple. It's our chance to become a real wife, a wife, faithful wife. Hashem accept our mistake. Because he's responsible for it, he chose that way. He says, it's fine. I, I am with you. I'll give you the stars. I'll give you what you need. I'll give you lights, pieces of light. I'll give you Torah Shebaal Peh, the second Luchos. So you can go through exile and have the Torah that will help you continue on your own. So, this is what we can work on during those three weeks. We can work on seeing one's greatness, seeing the greatness in, of others. Try to see why each individual is necessary in our society. I need this Jew for this, I need this Jew for that, I need this Jew for this, I need this non-Jew for this, I need this non-Jew for this, I need this non-Jew for this, I need this Jew for the whole world. I need this Russia for this, I need this good person for that, I need this simple person for this, I need these smart people for this. Every individual in the world has a greatness. If you can't see it, then why are you human in the first place? You don't even understand why you're here. You're here because you have a mission. And like you have a mission, everyone has a mission. And if you have a mission, you have a greatness. That's your light. So you have to find your light and then see everyone's light. Then when everybody's light is lit up and we recognize everyone's light, then the sun is lit up and there's light everywhere. And we can have two kings again, like at the beginning. And he says the light of the moon would be even, I don't remember the exact number, 653 times greater than before. And the light of the sun seven times more than before. So that means that this exercise, this suffering, this exile, the, all these problems enables us to give us the opportunity because you have to do it on your own otherwise you don't get your own light but that's the goal to go on your own and get your own light and understand that all that is part of gaining your own light and that's how we rebuild the temple that's what we work, we work during the three weeks so may we all give you 
blessing that we should all find our own light find the light and you start with your spouse the root of a good society the shoresh of a good nation a good society is a healthy couple that love each other you have a healthy couple you have healthy children you have healthy children you have a healthy society so that's where it starts find the greatness of people in your home and those that's the hardest because that's where we have the most resentment that's the people who hurt us the most because we love them the most but even behind all that hurt you have to be able to find that there's a greatness one greatness isn't enough try to read Tomer Dvorah the palm tree of Dvorah it exists in every language today by Rabbi Moshe Cordovero and you will learn to love everyone in the world starting with your own family first starting with the Jews first if you're Jewish with non, if you're non-Jews start with the non-Jews and then Bezat um, Hashem God willing we'll all be able to shine again like we shine at the beginning and may we see the third temple we built a temple that will shine even more than the first and the second because it will have acquired the light on its own. May we all be able to shine soon again.